Now that we know how to make animations in Rive, let's take a look at our export options. I can go up here to the export button, and at the top we can see export for runtime. Now what does this mean? Well, exporting for runtime creates a .riv file. This is a teeny tiny binary file that lets you use your animations and interactive graphics on web pages, in apps, and in game engines. So I can click export for runtime, and then click save. As you can see, the file was exported, and I can now use that file in my runtime code. And therefore, the .riv file type is the one that you would share with a developer. The second export option is a .rev file, and you can make one by going up to the top left, go down to export, and as you can see this is another place we can export a .rev, but in this instance we're going to export a .rev for backup. And just like the .rev, I can save this wherever I want. So what's the difference between a .rev and a .rev? Well, a .rev should be used in code by a developer, a .rev can be opened in the Rive editor, and so a .rev is the file type that you would share with a designer. The next export option is a share link. And what share links do is they let people interact with your animations outside of the editor in the browser. So I'm going to make sure that I have my correct artboard selected, the correct animation selected, and I'm going to generate a share link. Now, when you generate a share link, you get a bunch of different options. The first one basically lets people view and interact with your animations in the browser. The second one is an embed link, which lets you embed it onto a website. And then you get some more advanced options like embed code, and another option to embed on a framer website. We also have another option in the export section, and that is publish to marketplace. And what this does is it lets you upload your file to the Rive community. And this lets people play around with your file, they can like it, they can comment on it. But remember, they can also open up your file in the editor and see how it was made. They can even remix the file themselves. So if you don't want people poking around in your file, do not publish to the marketplace. But if you're open to that, just type in a title and a description and click here, publish to marketplace. Lastly, we can go up to the top left and export our file as a standard format. So just click Add to Render Queue, and here we have some options. Make sure that you have the correct artboard selected, make sure that you are exporting an animation and not just a design, make sure you're exporting the correct timeline, and then you can select a video, PNG sequence, GIF, WebM, or even an SVG sequence. You can also select the frame rate, but I'm just going to leave it at 60 frames a second. And you can pick how many times your animation loops in the video file. So I'm just going to select three times. You can change the bit rate, which basically means the quality of your video. And you can change the pixel size of the video. I'm just going to leave these both as auto. And now to render this, all I need to do is go up here and click play to start the render. That has now rendered. So I'll go into the Completed tab and click Download. And I now have a video file. Now this next point is quite obvious, but it should be noted that exporting a video, a PNG sequence, or a GIF will only include one timeline. Uh, any interaction that you've created in the state machine will not be included in your video, PNG sequence, or GIF. If you want to share interactive graphics, then you need to use a share link instead.